you could do an exercise where you could describe yourself 10 ways and then you could be like, and how are they not true? I noticed that I was telling them who I was and they were all limitations. I don't like this, I'm not good at that. But why did I offer up in a conversation limitations that aren't even true? Because you, like I was actually, in some perverse way, I was protecting myself by not, I didn't want you to go into areas I felt unsafe in. So if I tell you my limitations straight up, then we, you don't have to find what are the real ones. Your character armor is what you've developed to defend your insecurities that you've later identified with and has become a part of your character. Maybe this is why meditation is becoming so popular. In my opinion, you do need to have these sine waves of input and output, time alone, time with people, and you can't truly enjoy those experiences of being fully engaged with other people unless you have the blank space that reflects that. I totally agree and I went through a large phase of my life where I cultivated space and I felt like it was important to because we've become so full up with daily activity that I feel like just because I can be full up with activity doesn't mean I should. Abby Carver is about to go in for the third time today. Let's see if Hello, she survives. Serious third one of the day. That is the worst brain freeze ever. Feel, Feel great. Now. Feel Ooh. great. The limitations of identity. You were starting to talk about how people can decondition themselves from their stories. You could do an exercise where you could describe yourself ten ways, and then you could be like, "And how are they not true?" So if I could say I'm self-conscious, and then. I'm now doing a podcast with lights and cameras around me. You can give yourself examples. And you run a business where you present yourself semi-naked online this for large true. amounts of the time. Semi-naked. Very self-conscious. There are some ac- activities within shadow work and NLP that correspond to it. The mm-hmm. alternative timeline, they call it, mm-hmm. where you go back and you look at your life. Mm-hmm. And what we've really done is Ooh, we I haven't like told the story of our lives. We've told the story of key points in our lives that we've strung together. But somebody else looking at all the information from your life could identify other key points and tell a totally different story, therefore ending with a totally different Abby. I love that. Mm-hmm. And then once you've done it a few times, you almost mm-hmm. don't even need to do it again because mm-hmm. you realize, I am not these things I've identified mm-hmm. with. We are not defined objects. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a tomato stain on your shirt and you go and you meet this date. And you think that the only thing that they're going to notice on you is your red tomato stain. And so you become obsessed with that and you change your behavior to reflect that because this is what you're self-conscious about. And the two things you don't notice are, one is they're getting a much more global picture of you. They're picking up on something completely different. So what you're projecting out is very different to what they're seeing. The other thing is they've got their own tomato stain. So they think that you're preoccupied with something different. It's a projection thing Mm -hmm. to not go into subconsciously going into a new interaction and already have deciding what that person is going to see of you because you can't control it. You have absolutely no way of controlling how that person decides who you are. And so just be open to that. (laughs) 